Welcome back, Perception. It's time for us to carry on reading our story. Can you remember what it's called? The owl who is afraid of the dark. Good job. Can you remember what the baby owl, what his name is? Plop. Good job. We're going to read chapter three of The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark by Jill Tomlinson and illustrated by Paul Howard. Are you ready? Are you comfortable? Chapter three is called Dark is Fun. That evening when it was getting dark, Mr. Barn Owl invited Plop to go hunting with him again. Coming, son, he said. It's a lovely night. Ah, uh, not this time, thank you, Daddy, said Plop, who was sitting just outside the nest hole. I'm busy. You don't look busy, Mr. Barn Owl said. What are you doing? I am busy remembering, said Plop. I see, said his father. In that case, I shall have to go by myself. He swooped off into the darkness like a great silent jet aeroplane. What are you remembering, Plop? asked his mother. I'm remembering what the old lady said about dark being kind. She says she is never lonely in the dark because she has so much to remember. Well then, said Mrs Barnow, this would seem a good moment for me to slip out and do a little hunting. You're not going to leave me by myself, said Plop. I shan't be very long and I'll try and bring you something. I'll try and bring you back something nice. But I shall be lonely. No, you won't. You just keep busy remembering like the old lady said. Plop watched his mother float off into the darkness like a white feather. The darkness seemed to come towards him and wrap, himself, wrap itself around him. Dark is kind, Plot muttered to himself. Dark is kind. Oh dear, what shall I remember? He closed his eyes and tried to remember something to remember. Fireworks. He would remember the fireworks. He had enjoyed them. The darkness had been spotted and striped and splashed with coloured lights above the glow of the bonfire. He still had stars in his eyes when he thought of it. Shouts, happy shouts from under his tree brought plaques plop back from his remembering. He opened his eyes and peered down through the leaves. There were people running about in his field and flames were flickering from a pile of sticks. Another bonfire? Did that mean fireworks? Plop watched excitedly. He could now see that the people running about were boys, quite big boys in shorts. They were collecting wood for the fire. Suddenly, they all disappeared into the woods with squeals and yells. All but one, that is. There was one boy left sitting on a log near the fire. Plop forgot about being afraid of the dark. He had to know what was going on. So he shut his eyes, took a deep breath and fell off his branch. The ground was nearer than he expected it to be and he landed with an enormous thud. Cool, said the boy on the log, a roly-poly pudding. Who threw that? Nobody threw me. I just came, said the roly-poly pudding. And actually, I'm a barn owl. So you are, said the boy. Have you fallen out of your nest? You can see Plop fallen out of his tree and his tree above him. Plop drew himself up as tall as he could. I did not fall, I flew, he said. I'm just not a very good lander, that's all. I came to see if you were going to have fireworks, as a matter of fact. Fireworks, said the boy. No, what made you think that? Well, the bonfire, Plop said. Bonfire, said the boy. This is no bonfire, this is a campfire and I'm guarding it till the others get back. Where have they gone? asked Plop. They've gone to play games in the dark, lucky things. Do you like playing games in the dark? asked Plop. It's super, said the boy. Dark is fun. 
even quite ordinary games like hide and seek are fun in the dark. My favourite is the game where one of you stands outside a home with a torch in his hand and shines it on anything he sees or hears moving. The rest of you have to creep past him and, and home without being spotted. It's super. There was a crash and a yell of scumbo got you from the wood. See the picture of Plop talking to the boy sitting on the log. There, they're playing it now. Old Scumbo always gets caught first. He's got such big feet. You have to creep like a shadow not to be caught. Oh, it would be my turn to guard the fire. What's the fire for? asked Plop. Well, we cook potatoes in it and make cocoa and sing round it. What for? What for? Because it's fun, that's why. And because Boy Scouts have always had campfires. Is that what you are? A Boy Scout? Of course, silly, or I wouldn't be here, would I? I must put some more wood on the fire. Plop watched the Boy Scout build up the fire. Could, could I be a Boy Scout, do you think? He asked. I doubt it, said the Scout. You're a bit on the small side. I suppose you could be a cub, but you ha have to be eight years old. I'm eight weeks, said Plop. Looks as if you'll have a long wait then, doesn't it? Said the Scout. Anyway, he grinned. You'd look jolly silly in the uniform. Plop looked so disappointed that the scout added, Never mind, you can stay for the sing song tonight. Oh, can I? cried Plop. That would be so super. You'd better go home and ask your mother first, though. So Plop flew up to the nest hole and found his mother waiting. Where have you been? she said. She sounded a bit cross, like all mothers when they've been worried. I've been talking to a Boy Scout and he says that dark is fun and he says I can stay for the campfire so can I mummy please? Well yes all right she said. Oh super said Plop. So Plop was a Boy Scout for a night. He sat on his new friend's shoulder and was introduced to all the others. They made a great fuss of him and he had a wonderful time. He did not really care for cocoa but he enjoyed a small potato. His friend blew on it for him to cool it. Because he knew that owls swallow their food whole, whole and a hot potato in the tummy would have been very uncomfortable for Plop. The scouts huddled round the fire and sang, a song, sang and sang while the sparks danced. They sang funny songs and sad songs, long songs and short songs. Plop did not sing because he wanted to listen. But every now and again, he got a bit excited and fluttered round the boy's head, crying, eek, 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 and everybody laughed. They sang until the fire had sunk to a deep red glow and Plop had turned quite pink in its light. Then it was time to go home for the boys and Plop. And when Plop said goodbye to them all and bowed and bowed till he ached, he spread his wings and flew up to the landing branch. Well, said his mother, I told you, the Boy Scout says dark is fun. And what do you think, Plop? I still do not like it at all, but I think campfires are super. Did you bring me something special? I did. Plop swallowed in one gulp. That was nice, he said. What was it? A grasshopper. Hmm. I like grasshopper, said Plop. What's next? That's the end of our chapter, chapter three today of our story. Come back tomorrow and we'll read the next chapter to find out what Plop's adventure is next. See you really soon.